Hi there, my name is Casey, and in this video, I will demonstrate how Big Eye helps organizations achieve proactive data observability by deploying metrics. One kind of metric that Big Eye provides will monitor data pipelines for freshness and volume to ensure that data is moving reliably, arriving on time, and in the quantity that we expected. Other metrics will ensure that critical data columns contain values that are appropriate for analytics. We will explore an issue identified by Big Eye and perform a root cause analysis. And finally, we'll provide input to Big Eye's machine learning models in order to tune the system to alert us only in the case of true anomalies that impact the business. Let's start with some high-level architecture. BigEye is a SaaS platform hosted in our multi-tenant AWS infrastructure. We also have a single tenant offering. For customers with stricter security requirements, BigEye deploys via an agent model, which is a modified SaaS infrastructure in which BigEye still hosts the core application, but all database calls are made via an in-network agent server. The way this works is that Big Eyes SaaS puts requests into a queue that are then picked up by the agent. Aggregated pushdown queries are made to client data sources, and then the payload is returned to Big Eyes SaaS in a double encrypted channel. It is critical to note that no raw data or credentials leave the customer environment. We look forward to learning more about your requirements to identify the best deployment method for your business. Big Eye establishes connectivity to your relational data sources via our catalog. Please note that we can connect as easily to modern cloud platforms like Snowflake, BigQuery, Redshift, and Databricks, as well as transactional systems like Postgres and MySQL. SQL query layers like Athena and Trino help us monitor data lake resources. We also connect directly to a number of BI tools, such as Tableau and ELT tools like dbt Cloud. We connect via read-only credentials and we never store record level data. Most customers implement monitoring at each various stage of their data pipeline to help understand the origins of their data issues for root cause analysis. In this way, they can fix data issues where they first occur, ensuring that they do not persist through a pipeline and into critical reports and dashboards. The purpose of Big Eye is to blanket data pipelines with scheduled statistical runs that identify stale, stuck, incomplete, broken, and inappropriate data, all of which adversely impact business reporting and cause teams to lose faith in organizational data. Let's turn first to pipeline reliability metrics. In other words, freshness and volume. The points on the freshness chart at the top of my screen represent data loads. The red line appears when data becomes stale according to Big Eye's machine learning generated load pattern before eventually data loads again and the line goes back to black. The vertical lines below indicate the volume of data received during each data load event and the red lines show larger than usual data volumes. The gray area behind both of these charts shows the range of values expected. They are called auto thresholds, and they are intelligently generated for every individual metric deployed in Big Eye. So any value appearing outside of this range, or any threshold that you define, appears red, prompting Big Eye to generate an issue or an in-app ticket reflective of a single instance of a metric breaking. So what are we actually learning about this part of our pipeline? It looks as though Big Eye expects data to load every one to two hours. We can learn that from the y-axis, but mostly every one hour. On November 15th at 7 a.m., data was almost three hours late and Big Eye alerted. Now it's back to every hour and the thresholds behind the freshness chart are narrowing to reflect a closer band of one to two hours, probably because a user provided feedback that the alert at 7 a.m. was in fact a good one. Below, we can see that Big Eye is getting better at anticipating data load volumes 
and a few loads have been outside of the expected range. Now let's shift gears and look at a column level metric. This metric shows the average hourly sales of a company. Please notice that although Big Eye initially employed a narrow threshold, it quickly learned the seasonal pattern of this data and adjusted its threshold to expect the data in a very particular shape. What's cool about this is that when you configure a data quality metric, Big Eye gives you the option to backfill that metric from the time it's created for some historical period and therefore allow our machine learning models to train up quickly without having to wait days or weeks. This metric was deployed in early November, easily backfilled to capture the second half of October, and then the thresholds quickly adapted to reflect this particular sales pattern. So you're probably wondering, how do I create a metric in Big Eye? Good question. There are a few ways, but let's start with the most intuitive which is through the add metrics modal. First, using the catalog on the left side of your screen, navigate to a schema, table, or column. I'll start from the orders table. Now I'll click add metrics to open the metric modal. In the metric modal, I'll see a number of buckets of data quality type metrics. Metrics that I can't find in these five folders may be found here in the All Metrics folder. I'm going to apply some numeric distribution data quality type metrics. When I click Next, I'm brought to the data screen where Big Eye will show all of the columns eligible to receive the metrics that I selected. I'm going to choose Price Per Unit. When I click Next, I get to the configurations for the three metrics I'm building. Let's go through them. First, I'll define a schedule, which I can choose as a frequency from the dropdown or define using cron syntax for a specific time. Next, I'll define the look back window or how much data to run against each metric. This is informed by the row creation time or the column on which Big Eye will window your data to apply the look back window you selected. Then I'll select a threshold type. In this case, choosing auto thresholds, which can also be configured with the sensitivity or to include upper, lower, or both bounds. You'll notice that Big Eye also allows for deploying constant thresholds. For example, the average algebra test score must be between one and 100 to be valid. A relative threshold, like, please inform me if our daily total sales drop 5% over the previous day. And standard deviations. Let's select auto thresholds. And to ensure that I get value from this right away, it's important to actually go back one screen and click one time 90 day backfill. This is what allows Big Eye to backfill that historical data and train up the machine learning model quickly on this data. Finally, I can define any extras like group by aggregations, which will roll my data up to some element. For example, I may now want to see average min and max price per unit by product type or by shipping state. When I'm finished, I can deploy these metrics or I can add them to a collection, which is a defined folder which contains metrics of your choosing based on the audience who will see them and be alerted if they break. Alerting in Big Eye is most efficiently configured at the collection level. From a collection, I can define alerting in the following ways. To notify a Slack channel or MS Teams channel, to send a passive email to an individual or team, to create a ticket in an external ticketing platform or fire a webhook that kicks off a process in some other tooling of your choice. After creating a collection, you can add metrics from many different parts of the platform, such as the data catalog or at the end of the add metric. Now that we have the basics down, let's see how this works in action. I mentioned earlier that when a metric breaks, it creates an issue. 
or an in-app ticket. And the notification method defined at the collection level will then trigger an alert. Imagine you're a data engineer sitting down to start your day when you received some Slack alerts informing you that some critical metrics having to do with order statistics have broken. This is the collection that tracks individual product prices at the order level and helps your company monitor price trends, especially with regard to your dynamic pricing model. From the alerts I'm receiving, it's pretty clear that something has happened with my pricing, as the minimum, variance, and average are all alerting. It's happening across a number of data sources in my pipeline as well. So let's follow the hyperlink to the collection to see these issues in context. From the Issues tab in my collection, I can dive further into any issue. In this case, I'm going straight to the Sales Dashboard table in Snowflake. The Issues page looks a lot like a metric view, but it contains some specialized tools that help me understand the problem in context. Looking more closely at this metric, I can see from the narrow threshold band and relatively straight line that the minimum price per unit for products sold hovered in the realm of $12.50, but suddenly dropped this morning and today to just 12 cents. This is an enormous variation and definitely will require some further exploration. Let's use the tools available to us. First, I'll look at the Lineage tab. The Lineage tab allows me to visualize this issue within my greater pipeline. It will become evident here if the problem appears partway through a pipeline, which may indicate that the issue is a result of a bad transformation or replication. Our DBT integration may shed more light on which job last ran to help pinpoint the problem. In such a case, I recommend using the deltas functionality to compare the aggregate values between the data at two stages to confirm that the data broke somewhere between the data lake and the data warehouse, for example. Deltas are a great way of reconciling data between a source and one or more targets. But in this case, I can actually see that the problem I'm looking at originated in the orders table all the way back in Postgres. I can also validate that this table has significance for critical reports and dashboards, making it a high priority to me. The debug tab is helpful for showing me both the SQL metric that Big Eye translated from all my metric configurations and issued against my source database as well as a debug query, which will identify the records that ran afoul of the thresholds defined. The preview button for customers who enable it will allow me to see a sample of those rows at a record level. It's worth noting, and the UI will remind me, that Big Eye does not persist any record level data. It's simply displayed in short held browser cache. Organizations that allow their teams to view this preview, though, report that sometimes it has high analytic value for problem solving. For example, my analyst brain immediately asks questions like, could an employee have abused a discount? Well, the customer names differ greatly, so that's not likely the case. Did a single product SKU get mispriced in our online system? It looks like these very low prices span various products. So that doesn't seem likely. Could this be an issue with a payment system, whereby a decimal was misplaced or currency was converted incorrectly? Seeing that it happened across payment methods and credit card types, that also doesn't seem right. However, a pattern is definitely evident where all of these orders have a shipping state of New Mexico. Although it doesn't explain why this happened, I do have a better sense of the scope of this issue. Fortunately, I have an interactive data observability platform that gives me a friendly UI to test my theory in real time at the source in Postgres and configure a grouped metric that will measure the minimum price per unit and roll that up to a shipping state in the dataset. The new metric can be backfilled to show a recent pattern 
and the drop in unit prices in New Mexico alone can be quickly confirmed. This concludes my demonstration of Big Eye. I hope that in the last few moments, you've been able to learn more about the types of metrics that Big Eye helps monitor and how to create and configure those metrics and make use of your chosen threshold types, including Big Eye's auto thresholds. How to organize your metrics for the purposes of alerting. How to disposition a data issue and use lineage and find the root source. How to troubleshoot the issue using reconciliation checks and debug queries. And finally, how BigEye's machine learning models can be continuously tuned with user feedback. Thank you so much for joining me today.